the Forgotten Bunker. In October 7, 2017, a group of explorers discovers a mysterious World War II bunker in forests near the German-Polish border, uncovering eerie symbols and signs of otherworldly experiments within its depths. I've always been fascinated by the remnants of history, those silent sentinels of the past that linger in the shadows, untouched and largely forgotten. It was this insatiable curiosity that led me, Mark Jensen, along with my friends, Sarah, Tomas, and Emily, to the dense, mist-laden forests near the German-Polish border. Our goal? To uncover the secrets of a World War II bunker, hidden away from the world, a relic of a time shrouded in darkness and mystery. It was October 7, 2017, a day that dawned with a gray, overcast sky, as if nature itself was wary of our expedition. I remember the chill in the air, a premonition that clung to my skin like an invisible cloak. Sarah, with her camera perpetually at the ready, captured the eerie beauty of the forest as we trekked deeper, her lens flirting with the dancing shadows. Tomas, our local guide, moved with a quiet assurance, his eyes scanning the underbrush as if he expected the trees themselves to reveal their secrets. Emily, ever the journalist, documented every step with her recorder, her voice a soft narration to our little adventure. The bunker, when we finally stumbled upon it, was an imposing structure of concrete and steel, half swallowed by the earth. It stood there, a silent guardian of the past, its entrance gaping like the mouth of some ancient beast. I felt a shiver run down my spine, not from the cold, but from the anticipation of stepping into a forgotten chapter of history. As we entered the bunker, our flashlights cut through the darkness, revealing corridors that stretched into an oppressive silence. The air was heavy, laden with the scent of damp and decay, a tangible reminder of the passage of time. The walls, lined with peeling paint and rusted metal, whispered secrets in a language only the brave or foolish would dare to interpret. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, as if the shadows themselves had eyes, observing our every move. It was a place out of time, a labyrinth of memories and mysteries, waiting for us to unravel its enigmatic past. And unravel we did, not knowing that with each step, we were walking deeper into a web of forgotten horrors and timeless terrors. Hey, quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. The chill of the bunker's air was like an icy breath on the nape of my neck as we ventured deeper into its forsaken halls. Our flashlights, feeble against the encompassing darkness, barely revealed the secrets etched into its walls. Time had transformed this place into a crypt of lost stories, and each step we took echoed like whispers from the past. In the beam of my flashlight, the walls seemed to come alive, adorned with symbols that danced at the edge of understanding. They were unlike any I had seen in my studies of World War II relics. These symbols, etched with meticulous care, spoke of an intent far removed from the ordinary. Sarah, her camera clicking rhythmically, captured these enigmatic designs, while Thomas, with a furrowed brow, muttered about local legends I'd previously dismissed as mere folklore. The most unsettling discovery awaited us in what appeared to be a laboratory, hidden behind a rusted, creaking door. Inside the air was stale, thick with the residue of unspoken horrors. It was a scene frozen in time, with dust-laden equipment and glass tubies shattered long ago. There, amidst the relics of obscure experiments, lay a ledger, its pages yellowed and fragile. As Emily carefully leafed through it, her expression shifted from curiosity to disbelief. It's about time manipulation, and something else, something otherworldly, she whispered, her voice tinged with unease. Our exploration led us to a room that seemed untouched by the decay that plagued the rest of the bunker. It was here that Sarah's camera captured something inexplicable, a shadow that moved against the logic of light, a fleeting glimpse of something that should not have been. We stared at the camera's display in silent confusion, the image challenging our understanding of reality. That night, as we settled within the bunker's cold embrace, a palpable sense of dread settled over us. The whispering voices we dismissed as echoes of our own movements grew louder, more insistent, as if the very walls were speaking. The air felt charged, heavy with the weight of unwatched eyes. I lay awake, listening to the sounds of the bunker, the subtle creaks and sighs of settling concrete, the distant drip of water. But amidst these mundane sounds, there was something else, 
something that danced just beyond the reach of our flashlights, hiding in the shadows, watching, waiting. We were not alone in the forgotten depths of this relic, and I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever resided here with us was as curious about our presence as we were of its secrets. The first night in the bunker was a symphony of unsettling sounds and restless thoughts. As darkness enveloped us, the line between reality and imagination blurred, and the bunker's eerie atmosphere became almost palpable. We had set up our makeshift camp in what seemed like a common area, a room void of the sinister equipment that filled the rest of the bunker. The dim glow of our lanterns cast long, dancing shadows on the walls, each flicker fueling our growing apprehension. Sarah, ever the stoic, kept her camera close, her eyes occasionally darting to its lens as if expecting it to reveal some hidden truth. Tomas, usually unflappable, muttered prayers in his native tongue, his gaze fixed on the dark corridors that stretched beyond our circle of light. Emily, notebook in hand, was the first to break the silence. Do you hear that? She whispered, her voice barely rising above a hushed tone. We listened, and in the stillness, a faint whispering emerged, like a conversation happening just beyond our understanding. It was an alien sound, one that seemed to have no source yet felt intimately close. As the night deepened, the air grew colder, and the bunker's secrets seemed to press in on us from all sides. I remember lying there, wrapped in my sleeping bag, my mind racing with questions. What were those symbols? What experiments were conducted here? The whispers continued, a constant undercurrent to our thoughts. At some point I must have drifted into a fitful sleep, for I was jolted awake by a chilling sensation, the unmistakable feeling of being watched. My eyes snapped open, and for a moment, I saw it. A shadow, darker than the surrounding darkness, standing at the edge of our camp. I blinked and it was gone, leaving me to question whether it had been there at all. The next morning we awoke to find everything seemingly unchanged, except for one startling discovery. Sarah's camera, left on overnight, had captured an anomaly, a series of images where the shadows seemed to move of their own volition, contorting into shapes that defied explanation. These images, coupled with our experiences from the night before, solidified a creeping realization. We were not alone in this forgotten relic of war. There was something here with us, lurking in the shadows, a silent observer to our intrusion. The morning light, a dull gray seeping through the bunker's entrance, did little to dispel the night's unease. As we convened over a sparse breakfast, our conversation inevitably turned to the mysterious shadows and whispers that had infiltrated our dreams and reality. The bunker, with its oppressive walls and hidden corridors, felt like a living entity, its heartbeat echoing through the cold concrete halls. Armed with renewed determination, we delved deeper into the bunker's enigmatic heart. The corridors seemed to twist and turn in impossible ways, as if reshaping themselves behind us. In one chamber, we stumbled upon a cache of old dust-covered equipment, radios, gauges, and devices that defied immediate identification. Emily, with a historian's eye, noted their advanced design, far beyond what would have been expected for the era. Our most significant discovery lay hidden behind a false wall, revealed by Thomas's keen observation. A small room, untouched by time, housed stacks of decaying documents and brittle maps. The air was thick with the scent of old paper and forgotten secrets. As we sifted through the papers, a picture began to form, one of desperation and forbidden knowledge. The documents, some in German, others in a language we couldn't identify, spoke of experiments that blurred the lines between science and the occult. Sarah, examining a series of faded photographs, found images of what appeared to be the bunker's staff, their faces etched with both pride and fear. In the background, a machine loomed, its purpose unclear, but its presence ominous. Tomas, translating a particularly weathered journal, relayed a scientist's account of breaking the temporal barrier, a phrase that sent shivers down my spine. The most disturbing revelation came from a tattered diary, its pages filled with frantic scrolls. The writer, a scientist consumed by guilt and terror, spoke of an entity, an unintended consequence of their experiments. This entity, it seemed, was not bound by the laws of physics as we understood them. It could manipulate time, create illusions, and most alarmingly, it had developed a curiosity for us, 
As we pieced together the cryptic puzzle, the bunker's silence felt heavier, as if it were absorbing our discoveries, our fears. The shadows seemed to press closer, no longer content to be mere spectators. We were uncovering truths that were never meant to see the light of day, and with each revelation, the bunker's ominous presence grew more tangible, more threatening. As night descended once more, an oppressive sense of foreboding settled over our camp. The bunker's air, once merely cold, now seemed to carry a weight, pressing against our chests with an almost physical force. Our conversations had dwindled to hushed tones, each of us lost in our thoughts, pondering the chilling implications of our discoveries. That night, the bunker's haunting intensified. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, as if they were trying to communicate something urgent and dire. I lay in my sleeping bag, eyes wide open, staring into the darkness that seemed to teem with unseen watchers. It was then that the entity made its presence undeniably known. It began as a flicker in the shadows, a subtle movement that caught the corner of my eye. I turned, expecting to see one of my companions, but was met instead with the sight of a figure, ethereal and shimmering, standing at the far end of the room. Its form was indistinct, like a smudge on the lens of reality, constantly shifting and changing. Sarah, noticing my gaze, turned her camera towards the figure. The camera's display showed nothing but empty space where the entity stood, yet we could all see it with our own eyes. It was as if the entity existed in a realm just beyond the reach of technology. Thomas, his voice barely a whisper, began to recite a prayer, his words blending with the whispers that filled the air. The entity, however, seemed unfazed by his incantations. It moved closer, its form becoming clearer, more defined. It was humanoid, but in a way that was deeply unsettling, its proportions wrong, its movements jerky and unnatural. Emily, ever the rationalist, reached out a hand towards the entity, as if to confirm its reality. Her fingers passed through it, causing a ripple across its form. A wave of nausea hit me as I watched, the air around us charged with static energy. The entity's presence was overwhelming, suffocating. It felt as if it were reaching into our minds, sifting through our thoughts and fears. In that moment, I understood the truth of the scientists' frantic writings. This entity was not just a byproduct of the experiments. It was a conscious being, born of human hubris and fed by our fears. As suddenly as it appeared, the entity vanished, leaving us in stunned silence. The whispers ceased, the oppressive weight lifted, but the terror remained. We knew then that we were not dealing with mere ghosts of the past, but something far more sinister and incomprehensible. The bunker, with its dark corridors and hidden secrets, had become a prison, and we were trapped within it. Alongside something that defied the laws of nature, dawn broke with a deceptive calm that belied the chaos of the night. The entity's visitation had left us shaken, our minds teetering on the edge of reason. We gathered in a somber huddle, the unspoken decision hanging in the air. We needed to leave, to escape the oppressive grasp of the bunker and its otherworldly inhabitant. Our plan was simple, retrace our steps and find our way back to the surface. But the bunker, with its labyrinthine corridors and shifting shadows, seemed to have other ideas. The familiar passageways twisted inexplicably, leading us in circles. The walls, once silent guardians, now felt like they were closing in, suffocating us with their cold, unyielding embrace. Panic set in as we realized our escape routes were inexplicably sealed. Doors that had stood ajar were now immovable barriers. Corridors that should have led us to safety looped back on themselves in a maddening maze. The bunker was no longer just a structure of concrete and steel. It was a living, breathing entity, and we were trapped within its bowels. It was then that Mark disappeared. One moment he was with us, his flashlight beam a beacon of hope in the darkness, and the next he was gone, swallowed by the shadows. His absence left a void, a tangible sense of loss that gripped our hearts with icy fingers. Our search for Mark only plunged us deeper into the bunker's nightmarish heart. His voice echoed through the corridors, a ghostly call that led us into ever more sinister depths. Each turn revealed rooms we had never seen before, chambers filled with grotesque machinery and haunting echoes of the past. As we wandered, lost and disoriented, the entity toyed with us. Visions flickered at the edge of our vision, images of our deepest fears, 
our darkest secrets, materializing and vanishing in the blink of an eye. The air crackled with an unseen energy, a malevolent force that seemed to feed on our despair. In our desperation, we stumbled upon a revelation, a hidden chamber, its walls scrawled with frantic notes and diagrams. Amidst the chaotic scribbles, a glimmer of hope, a ritual, crudely outlined, that promised a way to banish the entity and break the hold it had on the bunker. Clutching this newfound knowledge like a lifeline, we prepared to confront the entity, to reclaim our freedom from the dark heart of the bunker. But as we readied ourselves for the ritual, we knew deep down that we were stepping into the unknown, challenging forces beyond our understanding. The bunker, with its twisted corridors and lurking shadows, had become a battlefield. And we were the unwilling soldiers in a war against an unseen enemy. In the dim light of our dwindling flashlights, we huddled around the scattered papers. The ritual instructions are only beacon in the oppressive darkness of the bunker. The text, scrawled in a frenzied hand, spoke of a ritual to banish the entity, a desperate plea from a long-forgotten soul who had witnessed the unspeakable. Our minds, once logical and skeptical, had been eroded by the unrelenting terror of the bunker. We clung to the ritual as a drowning man clings to a life boy, knowing it was our only chance of escape from this subterranean nightmare. As we pieced together the ritual's components, a chilling realization dawned upon us. The entity we faced was not merely a remnant of the bunker's past, but a manifestation of human ambition and fear, born from the reckless experiments that had breached the veil between worlds. The bunker itself seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, as if it were aware of our intentions. The whispers returned, now a cacophony of voices that clawed at our sanity. Each word from the disembodied chorus felt like a needle in our minds, urging us to abandon our plan, to surrender to the darkness. Amidst this maelstrom of madness, we found Mark's camera, discarded in a forgotten corner. Its last recording was a window into his final moments, a harrowing account of his encounter with the entity. His voice, laced with terror, warned us of the entity's true nature, not just a predator of the physical realm, but a devourer of minds, feasting on our fears and insecurities. With Mark's warning echoing in our ears, we steeled ourselves for the ritual. We gathered the required materials, a mixture of mundane and bizarre, and began the incantation, our voices a unified chant against the oppressive silence of the bunker. The air crackled with energy, the shadows writhing in response to our words. The entity emerged, a swirling mass of darkness and light, its form more terrifying than anything we could have imagined. It was a tempest of souls, a whirlwind of despair, challenging our resolve with its sheer overwhelming presence. As the ritual reached its climax, the bunker shook, dust and debris cascading from the ceiling. We held our ground, our chant unwavering, even as fear threatened to engulf us. The entity raged against us, a storm of malice and hatred, but we continued, driven by a desperate hope for salvation. In that moment, we were more than just survivors. We were warriors, battling an ancient horror for our very souls. The bunker, once a tomb of forgotten horrors, had become the crucible in which our courage was tested, a place where the veil between worlds was torn asunder, revealing the abyss that lay beyond. The bunker trembled around us as we stood united, our voices rising in a defiant chant. The ritual, arcane and fraught with danger, was our only weapon against the entity that had ensnared us in its nightmarish realm. The air crackled with unseen energy, each word we uttered slicing through the oppressive darkness like a beacon of hope. The entity, a maelstrom of shadows and malice, swirled before us. It was a formless nightmare, a manifestation of every fear, every dread that had ever crossed our minds. It roared, a sound that was not heard but felt, vibrating through the very core of our being. Sarah, her camera forgotten, stood resolute, her eyes locked on the swirling mass. Tomas clutched a makeshift talisman, his lips moving in silent prayer. Emily, her voice steady, led the chant, each word a strike against the darkness that sought to consume us. The bunker itself became an extension of the entity, the walls pulsing with a sinister life. Corridors twisted, reality warped, as if the very fabric of the bunker was rebelling against our efforts. The air grew thick, suffocating, charged with a power that threatened to overwhelm us. In that chaos, I saw visions, 
phantoms of my past, my deepest regrets and fears taking form, whispering lies and half-truths, seeking to break my resolve. But amidst the torment, I found a clarity I had never known. This entity, this horror, was not invincible. It fed on our fear, our doubt, and in understanding this, I found the strength to push back against the darkness. As we continued the ritual, a light began to manifest within the entity, a glimmer of purity amidst the corruption. The bunker shook violently, a physical manifestation of the entity's fury. Debris rained down, the sound deafening, but we did not falter. With a final collective cry, we completed the ritual, the entity convulsed, its form unraveling, the shadows dissipating like smoke in the wind. A blinding light filled the room, and for a moment, we were engulfed in a serene calm, a stark contrast to the chaos that had reigned. Then, as quickly as it had begun, it was over. The bunker stilled, the oppressive atmosphere lifted, leaving us in a silence so profound it rang in our ears. We had faced the unimaginable, challenged the very essence of fear and emerged victorious. But as we gathered our wits, ready to leave this forsaken place, we realized the battle had left its scars. The bunker, once a place of hidden horrors, was now a tomb of a vanquished nightmare, a silent testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of the abyss. As we emerged from the bunker, the world outside felt surreal, like stepping into a dream. The forest, once a foreboding barrier, now welcomed us with open arms, its trees swaying gently as if in celebration of our return. The air was fresh, a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere we had endured below. It was a rebirth, a second chance granted after a descent into madness. We walked in silence, each of us lost in our thoughts, processing the ordeal we had just survived. The sun, breaking through the canopy, cast a golden glow that seemed to cleanse the last remnants of darkness clinging to our souls. Sarah's camera hung unused at her side, a silent witness to the horrors it had captured. Tomas, usually the storyteller, walked with a solemnity that spoke volumes of the impact of our experience. Emily, her notebook filled with frantic scribbles from our time in the bunker, looked around with a newfound appreciation for the simple beauty of the world. As we reached the edge of the forest, a startling realization dawned on us. Time had betrayed our perception. Days had passed in the outside world while we had been trapped in the bunker's timeless grasp. We emerged not as mere explorers of forgotten history, but as survivors of an encounter that defied explanation. In the aftermath, our story was met with skepticism and disbelief. Emily's article, detailing our harrowing experience, was dismissed as an elaborate fiction by most. The scientific community refuted the possibility of the phenomena we described. The bunker, in its collapsed state, offered no evidence of the terrors it had housed. Yet among us, there was an unspoken understanding a bond forged in the fires of fear and triumph. We had glimpsed beyond the veil of reality, faced the unimaginable, and return changed. Our lives resumed, but the shadow of the bunker lingered, a constant reminder of the fragility of our understanding of the world. In quiet moments, I often find myself reflecting on our journey. The bunker, with its dark corridors and lurking horrors, had been a crucible, testing our courage, our sanity, and our very essence. It was a chapter of our lives that would remain forever etched in our memories, a haunting melody that played softly in the background of our existence, a reminder of the time we walked hand in hand with the unknown and emerged into the light. Months have passed since we emerged from the depths of that forsaken bunker, yet its echo lingers in our lives, an indelible shadow that refuses to fade. We return to our normal lives, but the mundane reality now seems tinged with an otherworldly hue, a reminder of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown. Sarah, whose camera once captured moments of beauty and horror alike, now finds solace behind the lens, her photographs reflecting a deeper, more introspective understanding of the world. There's a haunting quality to her work, as if each image whispers secrets only those who have glimpsed beyond can comprehend. Tomas, who had always walked the line between myth and reality, now speaks less of folklore. His experience in the bunker has grounded him, his tales no longer just stories, but cautionary reminders of the mysteries that lurk in the shadows of our understanding. Emily's article, though met with skepticism, has garnered a cult following. 
A small but dedicated group of believers hangs on her every word, seeing her as a beacon of truth in a world blinded by disbelief. Her notebook, filled with the frantic scribbles from our time in the bunker, sits on her desk, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable horror. As for me, I find myself drawn to the histories and mysteries of the world with a renewed vigor, but now with a sense of humility. The bunker taught me that some secrets are better left undiscovered, that the depths of human curiosity can lead to abysses best left unexplored. We keep in touch, a small band of survivors bound by an experience that defies explanation. Our meetings are filled with shared glances and unspoken understandings, a language born from our journey into the heart of darkness. The bunker itself has become a legend, a tale whispered in the annals of urban exploration and paranormal investigation. Some dare to seek its ruins, driven by the same curiosity that once guided us, but they find nothing. The bunker has returned to the earth, its secrets buried under layers of rubble and disbelief. In quiet moments, I often find myself standing at the edge of the forest, gazing into its depths, half expecting the bunker to emerge from its earthen grave. But it remains hidden, a chapter of our lives closed, yet its legacy endures in our hearts and minds. It serves as a reminder of the fragile nature of reality, of the courage and fear that dwell within us, and of the unseen horrors that lurk in the forgotten corners of the world. We have come to the end of our story. Subscribe and like the video so as not to miss the videos that we will upload in the future. Tell me what do you think about this story in the comments. I'll see you in the next story.